Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. This is the second day of our scientific manuscript writing workshop, a partnership between Redi and the SSI. So I hope you all uh, enjoyed the session yesterday and uh, can enjoy the day with us um, today again. So um, I just would like to briefly introduce our instructors again. So we have Maria Elena, who is the scientific director of Sustainable Science Institute. Um, uh, Gregory Dias Jr., who is a postdoctoral scholar um, in the Division of Infectious Diseases and Vaccinology at the School of Public Health in Berkeley, California. And Stephen Popper, who is a visiting scholar also in the Division of Infectious Diseases and Vaccinology at the School of Public Health, uh, University of California, Berkeley. So today I'll just go, now I'll just go briefly uh, to our housekeeping. So uh, please note that this workshop is being recorded. The recordings will be available to you all in about two weeks in our YouTube channel. So you can watch the sessions again and send them to, to your colleagues who are not able to join. Also that participants' uh, videos and microphones have been automatically disabled so please use the chat to introduce yourselves and make comments. But if you're asking questions, don't forget to use the Q&A box because if you put them in the chat, maybe we'll lose them. So please um, make sure you put them in the Q&A box. Also, uh, the, the link used today is the same link you use for tomorrow and Thursday, the morning sessions. So it's again, the same link that you used yesterday is the same link for the, all of the morning sessions. Also, for the people, uh, the 20 participants that are taking part in the tutoring sessions in the afternoon, it's the same link you used yesterday, okay? Mm, so now also just wanted to say a few words about the um, certificates. So um, some, you, some of you were asking yesterday about them and we will uh, send automatically a certificate of attendance to anyone who participated for at least 80% of the workshop and also um, who have completed the workshop evaluation, which we will be sending to you uh, via email during this week. So you have to um, do both things, be here for 80% of the time and uh, fill the feedback form to receive the certificate. And it will go automatically to your email. So with that, I will now pass on to Maria Elena, who will restart the workshop today. Thank you very much for being here. Good morning uh, for us. Thank you for joining again. We have a lot of participants and it's greatly appreciated. Um, <clears throat> we are going to review a little bit of the uh, three of arguments for the larger audience uh, in case somebody has questions, um, either our participants or our four participants or, or the rest of the people that are joining this morning. Um, <clears throat> some of you that are not full participants did uh, work on the three of arguments. And if you have questions or you need um, to tell us what, you know, if you're, if you have uh, a tree that you want to share or you just have questions about them, uh, let us know and we'll, um, we'll try to help. Um, I'm going to share some of the examples from yesterday, um, just to remind you um, that him, how many topics we can actually have from different areas so that you can just have examples and go ahead and try to organize your thoughts. It's, we find it is a very good tool. Um, can you see it? Yes, we can. Yes, thank you, Luisa. So those are the examples I showed yesterday. Um, so what I wanted to say is the difference and, and of, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is not with me yet. Um, the difference 
in topics that you can uh, apply your tree of arguments. This was uh, an infectious disease, mycobacterium water. Remember they isolated in different parts of the city. It was a simple pro pro project. And then they described, they support their arguments with the evidence. So we're just reviewing, you know, um, this is the main, main finding that there was contamination tuberculosis in the water. And then they, how do they prove that? They tested the city, they tested, uh, characterized the pathogens found in the water, and then which ones were potentially pathogen, pathogenic for the, um, for, the, for the people, and then the water purification plants. Um, so then they give the, the, the actual results. Um, how many they tested, how many were positive, how many species they found, and the database of, in, de, depending on season area, uh, what does the sampling image map, actually they had map all the sites and where were the infection. And what I was telling them yesterday is that once you organize this <clears throat> three of arguments, you have your article practically written. You well, mainly the results, which is where you should start, what I was saying yesterday. So you have, you start writing resource saying we report in this um, study that, that we can we found mycobacteria in drinking water. And that uh, to, to prove that we isolated drinking water from the city. Uh, and you can see in table one, how many are positive or in graphic one or figure one, uh, the, the comparison of the samples are positive and negative. And you can discuss a little bit when you write the results and I'm gonna give a, a talk on that later. You, uh, you don't repeat what's in the table of figures in the text. You just guide the reader to what is that you want the reader to notice from the table. Notice, notice that there is an increase, notice the positivity of infection, um, and you don't give your opinion at this point. You don't say this is highly infected and it's at risk for the population. You don't. You do. You save all these things for the discussion. You just state the facts. This table shows this. This figure shows that. And um, and then you move on and explain uh, all the experiments you did in the order. So sorry. Here's one about the law of empowerment of citizens. So it applies the tree too. It's a very different um, application for the tree, but it helps you um, organize your thoughts on what is it that you want to say uh, when you analyze this law and how are the policy implementation and, and you can create a tree as well. And then you organize your thoughts, I apologize. And the other one is a genetic mutation. There are several in our group where you can um, then explain what the population you use, how many patients you study, who had the mutation, who didn't know, and you leave the implications for uh, for later. So that's all I wanted to, to share this morning um, and answer questions if there, there are any, um, or if not, we can move on with the next presentation. So if Luisa could manage the... Q&A. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, also, um, uh, your microphones are, are disabled for the participants, but if you want to say something, if you want to ask a question um, by saying something instead of writing, just let us know by using the raise hand button at the bottom here, and then we can open your microphone and you can say something if you would like to. So there is a question here, uh, the Q&A, which is, is it possible to use the tree of arguments in reverse, for example, when trying to decide if a research project can generate more than one publication? Um, for instance, it start by looking at the evidence and data analyzed, cluster this into arguments and determine if the project has more than one main point worthy of publication. Yes. Absolutely, you can start, and that's how you should start. Um, you start with the data and figure out how your data looks. <clears throat> you start by the argument, by, by the evidences of the arguments, right? The evidences that you have, and you work backwards. Then once you have your figures and, and tables and data, and you decide it's enough to publish, like I said yesterday, you have to have at least three arguments to make a 
uh, kind of like a good a good a good paper, a good article, a good manuscript, you have to have at least three arguments proving the main the main point. So you go backwards and then you decide if you have enough data if it makes sense, and then you reach your own conclusion. That's actually the proper way to do it. Uh, we started with the conclusion because we're working with people that already have data analyzed and they're ready to publish. So we're a little bit ahead. But that's a good question. Thank you. Yes, you start from the evidences at the end, analyze your data and see if it, uh, if it fits. Perfect. So um, this was the only question we've had. And I, okay, I see uh, Vincenzo raise his hand. So um, is this, uh, I'm going to allow you to talk to see um, if, if this, you raise your hand by accident or if you want to ask something, Vincenzo, you can unmute yourself uh, pressing the microphone button here at the bottom if you want to. Um, I just uh, got a new question here at the Q&A while uh, we're checking on Vincenzo. So it's a question from Cristiani and she asks, um, how can we use the tree of arguments to write a paper on a research protocol? So I think the question here is if it's, I think we had that question yesterday about a methods paper. So if it's a paper about a research okay. protocol, can we use the tree of arguments to write this paper? Yes. Um, when you are presenting a research protocol, um, you, when you're writing the article, you already done it. So you already implemented the research protocol and you want to write down what the protocol is. If you haven't implemented it yet, then it's just a theoretical article that you want to just what describe a new method without applying it that's kind of more unusual uh, if you are working on a methodology you should have tried it you should have had experience and present what happened because if not it doesn't make a very interesting um, article unless it's a it depends on the kind of methodology unless it's an analysis of policies or public health uh more of an essay that you want to make about a, a particular way of doing things uh, if you're going to introduce a method then you say we're introducing a new methodology and this is how it was compared with the previous methodology and this is our data on the on the met on the methodology we tested so it's like any other research article 